Torah Life Ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Nisa with Torah Life Ministries. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Hallelujah. We are going to be reading Proverb 30 today. Proverb 30. Continuing to read the scriptures every day uh, so people know and people remember and people are encouraged to read your word every day live. I'm going to be reading this with you over the internet uh, to encourage you. Uh, remember, as believers, there's six things we need to be doing on a regular basis. That is pray, pray is proclaim, read and repent and submit. Uh, my website is TorahLifeMinistries.org. You can see all the other live readings on there. We've already went through all the Psalms. Now we're doing the Proverbs. And we're going to be doing another book after this. We today are up to Proverb 30. Proverb 30. So it says, uh, the sayings of Agar. The sayings of Agar, son of Jack, uh, Jack uh, contain this message. Now this is a great message for you, everybody. And uh, listen to it. Think about it. And it's powerful. It says, I am weary of God. I am weary and worn out. Oh, God. It says, I am too stupid to be human and lack common sense. I have not mastered human wisdom, nor do I know the Holy One. So this person has no fear of Yahweh. That's what he's saying. It says, who but God goes up to the heaven and comes back down? Who holds the wind in his fist? Who wraps the oceans in his cloak? Who has created the whole wide world? What is his name and what is his son's name? Tell me if you know. Any student of scripture knows uh, his name and who he is, but this clearly person doesn't. So it says, every word of God proves true. He is a shield to all who come to him for protection. So, 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 so you understand here, every word. So here's the answer of the question. Tell me if you know. Every word of Yahweh proves true. He's a shield to all those who come to him for protection. So uh, we look, we read 151 Psalms that talk about his word, uh, Yahweh being a shield for us. It says, do not add to his words or he may rebuke you and expose you as a liar. And we know what the Bible says about liars. Uh, it says in the Bible, do not add or take away, but keep my commandments in the word. It says, oh God, I beg two favors of you. Let me have them before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. What a, what a great thing to pray and ask. Uh, second, give me neither poverty nor riches. And that's uh, quoting King Solomon, uh, who, who said that. Give me, uh, give me neither poverty or riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. So sat being satisfied with what Yahweh provides is the key here. To be satisfied with what Yahweh provides because most people that are greedy and, and prideful are never satisfied with what has been given to him. It says, for if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is Yahweh? And if I am too poor, I may steal and thus insult Yahweh's holy name. Never slander a worker to the employer or the person will curse you and, will, and you will pay for it. Some people curse their father and do not thank their mother. They are pure in their own eyes, but they are filthy and unwashed. There's a scripture in the Bible that says each person thinks their way is right, but it ends in death. Uh, verse 13 here says, they look proudly around, casting <clears throat> disdainful glances. They have teeth like swords and fangs like knives. They devour the poor in the earth and the needy from among humanity. A leech, uh, the, the leech has two suckers, and they cry out more. They are three. There are three things that uh, they are never satisfied. No four that they never say enough. So now we're getting to verse fifteen. It says that there are three things that uh, are never satisfied. One of them is the grave. So, so four things that are never satisfied according to this this, this proverb here. One thing is the grave. It's never enough. The other one is a barren woman, a thirsty desert, and a blazing fire. The eye that mocks a father and despises a mother, mother's instructions, will be plucked out and uh, uh, out by the ravens of the valley and eaten by the vultures. 
There are three things that amaze me. No, four things that I don't understand. How can an eagle glide through the sky? How a snake slithers on a rock? How a ship navigates the ocean? And how a man loves a woman? An adulterous woman consumes a man, then wipes her mouth and says, what's wrong with that? There are three things that make the earth tremble. No, four. It cannot adore, uh, endure. A slave who becomes a king, an overbearing fool who prospers, a bitter woman who finally gets a husband, and a servant girl who supplements her mistress. There are four things on the earth that are small but unusually wise. Ants, they aren't strong, but they store up food all summer. Hyrixes, they aren't powerful, but they make their homes among the rocks. Locuses, they have no king but they march in formation. And lizards, they are easy to catch, but they are found even in a king's palaces. There are three things that walk with steadily stride. No, four, that strut about. The lion, king of the animals, who won't turn aside from anything. The strutting rooster. The male goats, a, a, a king as he leads his army. If you have been a fool by being proud or plotting evil, Cover your mouth with shame. So this amplifies, this whole pr proverb ampl amplifies uh, wisdom or little snippets of, of wisdom that have come uh, to, the, uh, to, this uh, to, to the author of this uh, proverb here. It says, if you have been a fool by being uh, proud or plotting evil, cover your mouth in shame. As the beating of cream yields butter and the striking of the uh, uh, nose causes bleeding, so stirring up anger causes quarrels. Uh, so and not in the perfect <clears throat> order or the perfect poetry here, but little snippets from all of the Proverbs and Psalms we've already read uh, are here uh, contained in this uh, the, one of the last Proverbs here. And uh, more like reminders of these different things, talking about uh, the, the amazements of, of human beings, of Yahweh's work. So it starts off with how can a God go and come back and, and, who, and his name, who it is, and then going all the way down to the smallest animals. How do they do what they do? Because our God is an awesome God. Our creator is amazing. That's how. Uh, and uh, there's no thing too great for him to do. Uh, just too great for us to understand. It's like disease. You know, somebody told me a long time ago, there's no incurable disease, only incurable people. And uh, and that's it. There's no there's nothing too great for Yahweh. It's just our own uh, our own lack of faith that creates doubt and, or or just wonder of how in the world did that happen or how could our Creator do something like that? He can do all things. Somebody say all things. Hallelujah. Today is a Shabbat to set apart holy day of our Creator. He's given us instruction and guidelines. Praise Yahweh for setting us free from death row and uh, and, and giving us Yeshua to take our place. And leaving us with these instructions and guidelines, uh, this word, his word, so we could live it, we could, we could do it. Praise the wonderful creator. So thank you for checking us out. Uh, and, uh, and please share this with us on Facebook and, and YouTube and, and wherever else you can. And praise our creator again. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Have a great Shabbat, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow with Proverbs 31. Until then, have a blessed day and shalom. Out of the world, all my people seek the truth, avoid the evil.